Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have a lot to get into in regards to AMC stock and our broader market. So that is what we are going to cover here in this video. Hit the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and let's go ahead and get started. So AMC stock is up 3% today. That is very encouraging because you have just been falling so much. Now, some of this can be contributed to a, just an oversold bounce because you were at a record low on the RSI of like 17 and some change. And now you're bouncing. Now the RSI still very, very oversold, but now only at 21.85. So seeing a little bit of that oversold bounce today uh that looks uh pretty obvious to me so that's part of what is is going on specifically with amc we did get some bad news though i guess um not the news the markets were hoping for fed bostic cites possibility conflicts around the world could again complicate supply chains risk that u.s budget fights and elections could affect economy according to financial markets he says uh that he repeats his baseline is for rate reduction starting in Q3 with care needed not to cut too soon and risk renewed demand and price pressures. Fed Bostic says, I am open to starting rate cuts before July. If there's convincing evidence that inflation is slowing faster than I anticipate. Fed Bostic, given uncertainty, it's unwise for the Fed to lock in any approach at this point. So definitely some some verbiage there that is trying to push back on what the markets are currently pricing in. If we take a look at, at what markets are pricing in for March, you're still pricing in the first rate cut, 55.8% uh, odds, 43.1% um, odds of a uh, pause or a continued hold through March. So you are still pricing in the March rate cut uh, for December full year uh, 2024, you are pricing in one, two, three, four, five, six rate cuts at 37.8% odds and uh, uh, five rate cuts at 29.2%. So six rate cuts is still priced in, but getting more of that hawkish language from the Fed is definitely not fantastic. We could take a look at the two-year treasuries today. Two-year treasury yields are... Uh, uh, you can see a uh, pretty much flat. So not having a huge impact there. 10 year treasury yields up about four basis points. So continuing to see um, the 10 year treasuries rise. And that is something that is also contributing to this downside that we have seen in our markets to start 2024. So that's not exactly fantastic as well here on the day. Now, some developments that are coming out here uh, not that long ago. I think this article was posted like 30 minutes ago. It says Pakistan carries out military strikes on sep separatist targets in Iran following deadly attack on its own soil by Tehran. Now, uh, this is kind of get back for the strikes that took place earlier. Um, I was actually listening to the press conference because I, I didn't see this. Um, and they were talking about this and how the U.S. will do whatever they have to to avoid Iran getting a nuke. And uh, this is this did drop the markets, right? Um, this did have an impact on our markets. And that's why I'm bringing it up, because if you do get more conflict with Iran, potentially something worse from here, escalation, that's not going to be pretty, right? That's, that's not going to be great. And uh, stocks will definitely react to it, especially the oil markets, um, because, I mean, Iran could cut off the Strait of Hormuz, and that would be all bad news for basically uh, the world, but especially here for the U.S. But beyond that, there's actually not much that is going on out there in our markets today. You did have Discover earnings in after hours yesterday, the earnings call today. And you did see uh, Discover is down about 11% at the time of recording this video. TSMC. Uh, let's see. TSMC is up. Uh, TSM is up about 6.5%. So a little bit of offsetting earnings here. But definitely Discover earnings were not on the great side. Discover said they're putting up an, an additional billion dollars for loan losses uh, that they don't expect to get back. And that's what really killed their uh, their EPS. So, uh, you know, not the greatest to, to kind of pave the way for big tech earnings. 
that will start next week with Tesla and Netflix, and then the following week with Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, all of those other guys. So there you have it. That's what's kind of going on today. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, today and after hours, you are going to get uh, JB Hunt, PPG, and then a lot of regional banks today and tomorrow. State Street as well. Uh, coming tomorrow, Fifth Third Bank, Huntington, Ally, some well-known names that, that you will um, be familiar with. So banks so far, they haven't been pretty, but they haven't been terrible at the same time. So uh, it, that's probably what we can expect for those other earnings as well. Now let's take a look here. See if we can get an update, and we do. So as per the AI investor sentiment survey, we're looking at 40.4% of investors that are bullish, 32.9% of investors that are neutral, and 26.8% of investors that are bearish. This is actually pretty dang interesting because um, you've really seen the neutral investors pick up here. This is maybe a sign of, of more potential downside. What I mean is you started very bullish, right people were very bullish um you know in december and november and then the neutral kind of you know went very low the bears went very low now what you're seeing is people going from bullish to neutral slightly more to the bearish side but until you see the neutral and bulls go to the bearish side um and see that start to elevate you're probably not over with this selling. Now, the point is, the fact of the matter is, I've talked about this a couple times here on the channel now, but um, coming coming with big tech earnings, you have to get 11% EPS growth in the S&P 500 or higher, preferably higher, to get stocks can, to continue to go higher, right? 5% uh, isn't going to cut it. 10% uh, isn't going to cut it. You really need like 15% to have a surprise beat to the upside at this point to get stocks to, to, to materially uh, move higher from here. That does not seem likely in my personal opinion. So I think that is a big problem that we're going to be faced with as well as that. You're going to get a hawkish or more hawkish Fed Jerome Powell on January 31st um, th than what we heard previously. And that's also going to be another big problem for stocks. That's why I am a little bit on the defensive side as of right now, because there's there's so many uncertainties. There's just a lot we don't know. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 not liking the risk to reward here in our markets uh, going long. That is, uh, you know, buying some puts. That makes a lot of sense right now in my personal opinion. So uh, that's just my take on it. The next couple of weeks are going to be volatile regardless. AMC stock though, doing pretty well today. Uh, not not gonna lie, up 3%. 3% at this point is only 13 cents. So you could end the day red, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, markets kind of just keep falling as I can see on my screen here. So uh, maybe you see AMC start to kind of do the same thing, who knows. But here's your Ortex data. So this is data that we can uh, look at, that we can quantify, that we can that we can prove. I think the short interest is hundreds of percents, but you never know. Okay, uh, that's just my opinion from what I've um, kind of experienced over the past few years with AMC stock. Uh, if if you have a differing opinion, let me know what you think the short interest is down below. In the comment section but you do have a short interest of free flow at 9.94 percent 102.33 million dollars worth of short positions currently in amc stock dates to cover 1.29 24.9 million shares currently out on loan 22.6 million shares oh, i got the backwards 24.9 million shares currently sold short 22.6 million shares currently out on loan Cost to borrow 1.11% and utilization of 32.62 out of uh, 100. And then a short score of 56.63 out of 100. So not the most encouraging data, not the greatest data that we are seeing, but nonetheless, could be worse, right? You're starting to see the short interest climb again. Now you're at 10% legal short interest. Um Odds are you probably can continue to see that climb as well. We do need a commitment to not diluting shareholders. That will be very important if, if we want AMC stock 
uh, to go substantially higher from here. I don't know when or if that will happen, but if it does, that sets us up for a lot more potential upside. Uh, but I mean, if the short interest, let's say, were to go to like 20%, uh, then maybe people would get more bullish on the prospects of a short squeeze in and of itself. Now, if you take a look at cost of borrow max, 1.67%, cost of borrow minimum, 1.02%, and cost of borrow average, 1.09%. So nothing too you know, crazy over there as well. If we take a look at the option activity here on the day today, uh, definitely the bulls in control now. And as, as far as the total volume numbers, volume on the call side, 74.55%. Volume on the put side of 25.45%. So uh, you are seeing a put to call ratio, a volume of 0 0.34. That means there's three times as many calls today being bought for every one put. The interesting flow sentiment shows three orders totaling $61,000 with a positive order value of 17% from hedge funds and institutions. So uh, hedge funds, Hedgies institutions uh, still not that bullish on AMC as of right now. But what else would we expect, right? Taking a look at uh, this, this is the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average. That has just been plummeting recently. You're down another almost 4% today, down to about 55%. So almost half of the stocks out there on our markets no longer above their 50-day moving average. That is, well, not fantastic because the SPY is still trading pretty close to all-time highs. And uh, after all, your uh, um, your average stock is, is not anywhere close to that uh, besides your Magnificent 7. So uh, it's really a, a tale of, of, of two markets that is going on right now if you're in meta uh microsoft and some of those names you have probably had an okay start to 2024 if you're not in those names you've probably had a pretty poor start to 2024 i mean if you're an amc you've definitely had a poor start um to 2024 as well so all of these things are thanks to remember and uh consider if we look at the atlanta fed gdp now tracker especially that pakistan Iran, US Iran, US Houthi situation. You want to watch that pretty pretty carefully because if it does start to escalate, I think that will start to eke into more fear into our markets. Um potentially in the not so distant future, we'll have to see. Now, the Atlanta Fed GDP net GDP now tracker currently estimates GDP at 2.4%. Uh 2 days ago it was estimated at 2.2%. So, your GDP estimates are actually rising. This is a little bit of good news, but it's kind of counter counterproductive to, you know, rate cuts. So that's a little on the, the bad side, right? Uh, if, if we take a look at the 10 and two year yield curve inversion, you are inverted about 24 basis points. So uh, continuing looks like to uninvert a little bit, although you were inverted uh, 15 basis points. Uh, you have kind of given some of that back, but that's actually a good thing. Once you go uninverted is when you really have big problems on your hands. So there is that. Now let's take a look at the stock twits sentiment index. And you can see we are sitting at bearish at a 35. Not great, but message volume is on the high side at 63. So that is definitely on the higher side uh, compared to what we have seen um, you know, over the past couple of weeks. So that's good. It looks like there's quite a bit of attention uh, in, in AMC, people talking about AMC, and that is always going to be a uh, positive thing nonetheless, guys. So there you have it, your Stonko Tracker data. Just a brief look. Tomorrow's the last day of the trading week, so who knows what's going to happen. You could be set up for a Mega Bounce-like um, situation but that's now obviously not always going to be a guarantee. If you look at calls in the money, about 9,200. Calls out the money, uh, 258,000. Puts in the money, 87,000. Puts out the money at 35,000. So some uh, some pretty high numbers here, right? Especially if, if we do get a continued move throughout the day in the, the up direction, right? If we continue higher and then tomorrow is also green, then you could be looking at uh, some puts going out the money. And some calls going into the money, which could fuel potentially a large move coming tomorrow. I think it really depends on the economic data. I think it depends on, uh, you know, 
how AMC is uh, specifically, or more so the markets, right? 10-year treasuries, they're going to be influenced by the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey coming out tomorrow. We'll cover that in the next video and what those numbers could mean and, and what's going to be important. But um, if I were to lean in one direction or the other, I th I'm, I'm leaning pretty bullish for tomorrow. What's a one day prediction though? Let me know what you think down below in the comment section of all of this information. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.